GettingPositiveKarmaNow.com presents Bhagavad Gita for All Lectures by Nalan K. Narula Recorded in front of a live audience Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So we were on chapter 3 what was the text 28 we had finished 28. we had finished 28 right which was uh, a very important instruction to Arjun Tatvavit Tu Mahabaho Guna Karma Vibhavyo Guna Guneshu Vartante Iti Matva Nasajate One who is having the knowledge of the absolute truth Tatvavit, the one who knows the is the essence of the truth, Tatva Mahabaho, mighty armed one. Guna karma vibhaga yog guna guneshu vartante iti matva na sajjate. He does not uh, engage himself in working with sense gratification, working because of the influence of the senses, and he knows the difference between working uh, with devotion and working with an attachment to fruitive results. So that is a qualification of a person who is knowing the difference between the temporary material manifestation and the absolute. So such a person is engaging himself in work done for the pleasure of the divine, for serving the divine and we had discussed how in different ways how in different ways this is working out and one of the ways this is working out is that whatever we do as healers if we are using the healing energy to cover this work whatever work we do we do not know perhaps what is exactly spiritual what is material but when we engage ourselves in all the work covering it with the uh, healing energy of Reiki and the KQ force doing the work to be free from binding consequence karma and from reactionary forces this is in the direction of liberating oneself and others from uh, the material world uh, which is very pleasing to the divine Then we have text 29. Prakrite guna samudha sajante sajante guna karmasu tan a kritsna vidha mandan kritsna vit na vichalayet. Prakrite guna samudha. Those who are fooled by the prakriti, the material modes of nature, the mode of uh, ignorance, passion and goodness even. They are fooled, those who are fooled by these modes of nature, sajante guna karmasu, they become involved in material activities, guna karma, which means that they have materially binding consequences, they have uh, Results which come out of the work which bind them to remain in the material zone. Tana Kritsna Vida Mandan Tana Akritsna Vida. These people have a great lack of knowledge. Such people who work this way have a great lack of knowledge. Mandan, they have less self realization. And they are very lazy. They do not have the uh, 
impetus to understand uh, this, these topics. Kritsnavi, one who is an actual knowledge, now vichalayet, should not disturb these people. So one who knows, do not disturb them. So these people are confused and bewildered by the modes of material nature and they become attached to activities, to the material activities. The wise people, the one who know the reality, should not disturb them because this is coming out of their attachment or you can say in a way addiction to working for material results without understanding the spiritual or the absolute. So although these are inferior, we do not disturb them. Why do we not disturb them? Because it will create a great agitation in society if we disturb them. So let them do their work, but at the same time, we continue to channel the healing so that one gradually comes to the point of understanding. One of the effects of healing is that people begin to start looking at these things. And in the process, you are also freeing them from some binding consequence karma as you are freeing yourself. So that is all working for the divine. So then we have text 30 uh, 29 uh, this was 29 then we have text 30 mai sarmani mai sarvani karmani sanyasasya adhyatma chetasa nirashya nirmama bhutva yudhasva vigat jvara Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Surrender all that you do to me. Hmm? Mai to me Sarvani, all sorts of Karmani activities. Give them up to me. Adhyatma Chetasa Nirasi Nirmama Bhutva Yudhasya Yudhyasva Vigat Jara. So without the desire for profit, without the sense of ownership, this is the key point. Nirmama, me, I, the controller, mine. Without that, and therefore Yudhyasva, fight without being lethargic. Vigat Jara without being lethargic. So the key point is that you surrender all your works unto me, do it for me, with your mind intent on me, and without desire for results, and free from the controllership consciousness, <coughs> the ego aspect, and free from lethargy, you fight for me. So this is the key point. If you remember we have mentioned so many times that Master uh, Takata used to say, I have only the healing energy in my hand, God's healing energy. I don't have the results. So attachment to results is what we are talking about here. So detach from that. You do everything for me as a dutiful activity. And you offer this to me. That means the result is not in your hand. I am not the controller. I am not the doer. I am offering it to the Divine without ownership, nirmama, nirasi, without profit. Now, you may have the idea of profitability or gain. Ultimately, it is in your gain to do this, but that is on an absolute platform, so it is not materially binding uh, aspect or an activity that you do that binds you to material consequences. So. That's fine. That's not an issue. But if you are doing it for personal profit, for personal control, uh, with the idea that that is your main objective, 
that is the objective, then you are in ignorance, then you are misled, and you are befooled. Guna samudha, befooled by material identification. I am the body, and the expansions of my body are what are important. Uh, I am doing it for that. So there is an internal difference in how you approach your work. So this is clarified a little further in text 31, chapter 3. Yeme matam idam nityam anutishthamti manava shraddha vanta anasuyanta muchiyante te api karma bhi. Ye me matam idam nityam anutishthanti manava. Those injunctions of mine who follows and executes his duties according to those injunctions of mine and who follows this teaching faithfully shraddha vanto anasuyam to without envy, muchyante te api karma bhi, becomes free from the binding consequences of karma, from the bondage of fruitive action. They give you a result. That is the binding. So they are giving you a positive result or a negative result for which you have to come back and experience. You become free of that binding consequence karma, the bondage of fruitive results karma bhi, the necessity to come back to experience the results. So you are becoming binding consequence free. So there are two considerations here. <coughs> that one, you have to follow my injunctions, follow my path and teaching faithfully without envy. That is the second consideration. No enviousness. They do not try and take uh, the results of what you do as in terms of ownership. In the previous shlokas, Krishna has said that you have to be nirmama without the sense of ownership. So there is a sense of detachment because you are doing it because you are following Krishna's path and not because you are attached to a particular result, although it may appear that you are working for that result. So that's also fine. That That is actually something that Krishna deals with further on. That basically you may appear to be a person who is working for results but actually like an ordinary person. So it's difficult to tell the difference between one who's on the devotional path or the healer's path and one who is uh, actually attached to the results because the action seems to be the same. The people are going to work, they're going to office, they're working to you know, take care of their duties, dutiful needs of themselves and their family. But if they are doing it without attachment to the results, then they are working for the divine. If they are working uh, by giving up the results of their work, offering it to the divine, so this is what you are doing. When you are doing the healing, you are offering the results to the divine. I don't know what the results will be. Please, uh, the heart energy of the divine, the crown chakra energy of the divine, uh, please accept this, purify this work, so that it is all in the zone of the service to the divine. So, text 30, Krishna says, Mai sarvani karmani sanyasasya adhyatma chetasa nirasi nirmama bhutva yudhyasva vigata jwara. He says, fight for me for by surrendering all your works to me without the desire for gain 
and freedom from the uh, egoism and lethargy fight nirmama and then in the next text in in 31 krishna is saying one who executes his duties according to my injunctions following this teaching faithfully without being envious and uh, with faith shraddhavanta he becomes free from the bondage of fruitive actions karma bhi muchyante te api karma bhi so he becomes free of the bondage of material fruitive action even though he is acting even while acting he becomes free of the bondage of the law of binding consequence karma so that is the key principle and on the other hand text 32 ye tu etat abhyasuyanta na anutishthanti me matam sarvagyana vimudhan tan vidhi nashtan achetasa those who are performing these works out of envy and disregard my teachings and do not practice them regularly are to be considered to be vimuda ignorant befooled and they will be ruined because they will be remain in achetasa without the consciousness of the divine without krishna consciousness without uh, freedom without freedom from the fruitive results so they will remain in bondage and therefore uh, they will be in very very bad condition those who are out of envy and disregard these teachings and do not practice them regularly so regular practice is required we teach you 24 hours seven days a week you practice your healing cover everything with that energy offering it to the divine and which is why you say let the divine will be done or let reiki's will be done or let you know your understanding is that it we are offering this to the kq force or reiki and the result is not in my hand so that is a very very key point then how can you inspire people so krishna is giving another warning text 33 sadrisham chet sadrisham cheshtate svasya prakrate gyanavan api prakritam yanti bhutani nigraha kim karishyati sadrisham chet according to one's own nature prakriti jnanvan everyone is acting according to his own nature and the jnanvan those who are with knowledge know this and even a man of knowledge will act according to his nature because everyone follows his nature so by repressing or forcefully suppressing nigraha forcefully supervising Kim Karishyati, what will that do? What will that accomplish? By forcing someone onto this, how will he become free? He can't. So even if a person is in knowledge, even if you are a healer, even if you are connected to the energy, even if you are doing your healing, you are still driven by your nature. It's not that suddenly you become free of the drives of your own nature. But you cannot force it. In other words, the forceful methods of self-discipline, they don't work. The takeaway from this is that forceful methods of self-discipline ultimately will not work because the nature will overpower that. So then what is the solution? It's difficult. So the solution is that you continue with your work. Regardless of whether you're attached or detached, 
whether you're in knowledge or you're in ignorance or how much knowledge you are in, you may be driven to follow through your own nature to achieve something even as healers, uh, which is very normal. Uh, but there is some advice being given here, how to deal with that aspect in text 34. Indriyasya Indriyasya Arthe Raga Dveshu Vyavasthitao Tayona Vasam Agachit Tauhi Asya Paripanthinao Indriyasya Indriyasya Arthe Raga Attachment to the sense objects, the objects of the senses. Indriyasya Arthe, the results of the objects of the end point of, of the Indriyasya. Indriyasya, Indriyasya Arthe. The attraction and Dvesha, also repulsion, for sense objects are felt by everybody. Okay, so let's be very honest and clear about it. People are attracted and they are not attracted to certain things. They should not fall under the control of the senses and sense objects because these are paripanthinao, stumbling blocks. These are stumbling blocks. So what is happening here? Previous Lord Krishna has said that everyone follows his own nature, even a man of knowledge, even a person who is in knowledge will be driven by his nature and re repression will not accomplish it. And then in the very next breath he is saying that attraction and repulsion for these sense objects are felt by all the embodied beings, but one should not fall under the control of the senses and sense objects because they are stumbling blocks on the path of self-realization. So how does one do that? That is the question. So the answer to that is in text 35. Shreyana Swadharmo Viguna Paradharmat Swanushthitap Swadharme Nidhanam Shreya Paradharma Bhaya Avaha Shreyan Swadharma Viguna Paradharmat Swanushthitap Swadharme Nidhanam Shreya Paradharma Bhaya Avaha. It is far better to do your own duty, which is your own prescribed Swadharma, even though it is faulty, Viguna, it is without qualification, it is a failure, it is not done properly, it is faulty, then Paradharma, do a duty which is meant for someone else. Svanushthita, no matter how perfectly done, don't imitate, don't follow somebody else's path. That is forbidden. Because even if you get destroyed, even if you fall down, nidhanam uh, shreya, falling in your execution of your own duty is far better than performing somebody else's because following another's path is very very dangerous. Shreya paradharma bhaya avaha is a very fearful dangerous path. Shreya paradharma prescribed duty for others following those is very dangerous. So do not artificially take a platform of saying okay I will now attain to that platform. You must act according to your nature. You are going to. Krishna says earlier, you are going to act according to your nature. Whatever is your nature in the temporary qualification that you are born with, whether you are born as a Kshatriya or a Brahmin in terms of your nature. So Arjun is being told that your nature is a Kshatriya. You cannot artificially follow the Brahminical nature which you are aspiring to I will become a renunciant. Not at all. Not to be done. So do not think I am now going to achieve Brahminhood and become a Brahmin 
and retire from these duties because I am taking on a higher duty of uh, acting as a renunciant, detachment. So that is all artificial and fake and coming out of fear and coming out of anxiety and from your false ego. So that whole aspect of his Arjun's wanting to go to the forest and retire, Krishna is defeating again and again. And this is a very key instruction for us. It is far better to perform one's own dharma, prescribed duty, that comes out of your essential nature, rather than somebody else's, even how badly you may perform it, how faulty it may be, doesn't matter. And do not follow another's duty, because being destroyed in the course of performing your own duty is better than doing somebody else's duty no matter how well, because that is a dangerous path. Why is it dangerous? Because your essential nature will pop up at some point in time and you will be neither here nor there. You will be left floating high and dry somewhere. So, when somebody is perfectly cleansed, perfectly in a state of self-realization, uh, a Kshatriya may act as a Brahmin or a Brahmin may act as a Kshatriya. So in, in the absolute transcendental level, these things do not, these distinctions are not there. Hmm? So when you are performing your duties, on the material platform, you must perform them according to the modes of material nature, your essential nature. And that is a very, very key instruction. So we will pause here at text 35. It is far better to discharge one's own duty no matter how faultily done because these are arising from your essential nature and rather than following paradharma somebody else's duty no matter how perfectly done swanushtita so it is better to fail in your own duty rather than succeed in other words in somebody else's because that is artificial it is not born of your nature and it is useless work. So you cannot take on another's duty artificially. You cannot take on something that is not in your nature. So it is essential to know your nature. That is a key takeaway. And if you are driven to do something, then you must do that work in Krishna consciousness, in healing <coughs> consciousness, not being attached to the fruits of the result. Uh, and working in that divine consciousness of doing everything for the sake of Krishna, for the sake of the healing energy, for the sake of even being free from binding consequence karma. That is perfectly fine. So we will pause here. Text 35, chapter 3. If there are any questions, I shall take some questions. Sorry? See, you have a certain essential nature. The uh, You can say the contaminations of your nature will start to disappear. But you will be driven by your nature in any case, but the contaminants will be removed. So the biggest contaminants is that mama aspect. I am the doer controller and uh, envy of others, envy of the divine and not working uh, with regulative principles. Because Krishna is saying that you must work under these some regulative principles but not repression because repression is not going to 
uh, achieve anything. So you have to follow a certain code of conduct. You have to try to follow it. But you cannot forcefully repress something because it is not going to work. Because the essential nature will come out somewhere. So that essential nature may be contaminated and give you some negative results. But as you cleanse yourself with the healing and being doing this work, your essential nature also becomes to shine more than the contaminated aspect of your nature, which is attracted to the Indriyasya Artha, the objects of the senses. So gradually that will not drive you. You may be driven right now, but eventually as you keep doing the healing, then you become detached. It is like becoming detached from the results and that is one of the signs as a healer when you are doing the healing, you are not uh, wedded to the result in terms I must have it, I must have it and you kind of freak out that unless I get this result, life is not worth it, uh, if the healing doesn't work if I don't get this result. You don't have that kind of thing. That is only in the uh, neophyte stage. That you are wanting that everything should work out. But there needs to be a detachment. Krishna is saying that you have to be detached from the results of your work. So that is a key thing, being detached from the results of your work. In other words, I shall not anger, I shall not get frustrated, and I shall do my work honestly. These two principles going together, these four third and fourth principles of Reiki is what Krishna is talking about. Just for today, do your work honestly. Just for today, I shall do my healing. Just for today, I shall uh, do my work regardless of the results coming or not coming. So what is your work? You do your healing. You place this uh, energy that removes you, detaches you from the fruits of your actions. which is what you are doing when you are healing, you are actually detaching yourself from the fruits of your action. It's not that you are not getting the results or some fruits are not coming, they are coming, but they are not binding. Apparently you are working like an ordinary person who is not in knowledge, but as a healer, gradually your knowledge increases provided you continue to do the healing and associate with the knowledge givers, with the community, uh, encouraging you in this direction. So you need to get guidance from the spiritual master. Krishna is acting as the spiritual master to Arjun and telling him, you know, people are going to be driven by their nature. So by forcefully repressing them, it's not going to work. And at the same time, you must follow certain regulative principles. Otherwise, you will not be able to regulate your life. So that only is, is practical common sense knowledge that you must follow this. Otherwise, they will become a stumbling block. So we say that if you want something, even if it is bad, so-called, you know it's a stumbling block. It may create a problem. So channel the healing energy to it because that can change your drive naturally, not artificially, but naturally. And then there are certain fear of consequences that will prevent you from doing certain things. You may wish to commit some criminal act, but you know that if you are apprehended in the course of committing that act, you will have some punishment. So that is fear of consequences. So as you become more Krishna conscious, as you become uh, more tattva vit, know the truth by touching it directly, you know the essence of the truth, you gradually start becoming more detached from the objects of the senses. It, it, it is a transition that you go through. It's not happening overnight. But you need to follow certain rules. So unrestricted sense enjoyment, in any case your body is going to give you the consequences. If you are going to enjoy your body, bodily senses excessively, your body will suffer. You will be in pain. You will be in dis-ease. You know, 
you eat too much, you will be in pain. You will have digestion problems. You will have health problems. If you drink uh, too much, you know, if you are addicted to some kind of drugs, that again is going to give you a downside. If you are going to misbehave socially, you are going to be in trouble. You're not going to be able to get away with it. So there are going to be consequences. So regulate yourself. We are not repressing, but we are saying regulate. There's a difference between forceful huh, repression and between regulation. So regulation is required. So even in your healing work, you must regulate yourself. Do that as a practice, as a sadhana, as a practice. Do that daily. And Krishna is saying those who are working with this every day, they are in good shape. Those who are not, well, they are in a very uh, shaky position. Yes. Pranam, sir. Hanji, Bhaji. Um, sir, uh, in text 28, uh, there is, uh, it is written that absolute truth is in three different features. That is Brahman, Paramatma, and the su Supreme Personality. So, would like to understand a uh, little bit about this. What would you like to understand? Uh, in a very like, uh, is, <laughs> I'm not being able to explain. No, in, in 28, but, uh, in 20. Uh, it is Paramatma is the aspect within us. There is no uh, mention, the, there is there is no mention of Paramatma in this shloka. Which shloka are you reading? This shloka is uh, Tattva uh, Vita to Mahabaho uh, Gun Karma Vibhagayo. Guna guneshu vartanta iti matvana sajjate. This there's no mention of Paramatma. Here the slok is that one who is in knowledge of the absolute truth, tattva vit, then you are not working in sense gratification and because you know the difference between devotional work and work for fruitive results. So this is text 28. I do not know which text 28 you are referring to. Sir, it is the opposite in which it is given. It is Anji, the, no, we are not discussing. Is, no, we are not discussing the purport. Okay, what, sir, what, what, what is, what is, what is the confusion? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. No, no. Tell me what is the confusion. See, the absolute truth is that there is the universal Brahma energy that is flowing in the universe that is Reiki. The source of Reiki is Paramatma and Bhagwan. Okay, so what's the question actually? These, these are all coming from the source of all that exists, which is Krishna, the source of all sources. And he has infinite number of spiritual energies. One of them is Reiki. And this, the divine is sitting in your heart also as Paramatma. The Atma is the soul self and Paramatma is that who sits above the soul. So one who knows this, he is in knowledge. So that is Tattva Vit, one who knows the absolute truth. This is it. That I am a subservient servant of the divine of the same quality of the supreme but not the same in quantity and I am not the controller I am subservient that's the truth that's the whole absolute truth that you need okay um, 
yes, sir. So it is said that uh, you have been there the car on Monday. So what we have inside is exactly that is outside. Or what is outside that is exactly within us, the universe. Or there are two different things. So it is uh, the Brahman is also within us. And the yes. Supreme Personality also there. Yes. Or uh, it is... Uh, it is within us doesn't mean we are that. Don't, yes, conf sir, don't confuse the presence of the divine by being divine. You don't yes, attain, okay. you don't, you you don't become divine. divine. You don't become divine just because the divine energy is flowing in you. Yes, sir. It is uh, when the divine energy is flowing through us, then only we can be divine. It, uh, otherwise, uh, it, the question is not that. It is to understand uh, that uh, maybe in a way to correct uh, this three aspect uh, in a understanding way. It is not about uh, understanding myself as a divine. Uh, as you perfectly has guided us, as we are the servant of the divine. But uh, just to understand, sir. What is it that you want to understand? What is so con so complicated? If you know that the divine energy is flowing through the universe, it is a useful a, a universal energy. Another name of this universal life force energy is Reiki, right? There is the super soul energy which is the third symbol of reiki which is how you connect to that when you go to reiki 2 the third symbol is the parmatma energy and the supreme personality of godhead is krishna from whom everything originates so uh, that is how you are able to channel the healing from the center of every atom to the center of any other atom it is transferring through the Vishnu Tattva the Paramatma aspect the Vishnu Tattva aspect which is at the center Vishwa Kehar Anu ke andar jo wo supreme being hai that is Krishna so the Reiki energy in, includes that also so what you need to understand and this business of what is outside what is inside is not precisely exact it is just that there is a reference to the universe reflecting what is inside you that is one aspect but that is something different it is not that if in the spiritual world there is god in outside inside me there is god and i have therefore now achieved to godhead uh, godhood I am not ever going to become God. It is just that the divine is there with me to help me to liberate myself from the binding consequences of karma and to guide me back home. Once I am somewhat out of this delusional state and somewhat out of the uh, clutches of ignorance of the material nature and the binding of the illusory aspect of the material nature so this is all nature is also under the control of the divine uh, everything is under the control of the divine so he can at any moment reciprocate with you and which he is doing according to your internal intention how sincere are you are you sincere to what extent he will also reciprocate accordingly so material nature also will be modified for you accordingly. Whatever you are experiencing will be modified also. So your actual position, if I am looking at this purport by Bhaktivedanta Swami, uh, he is very clear that you have to dovetail all your activities in devotional service to the Divine. And you engage yourself in these activities and naturally become unattached. So there is no confusion there and a person who is knowing the absolute truth in the features of Brahma, Paramatma and the Supreme Bhagavan is called Tattvavit because he knows his factual position. So his factual position is that he is eternal servant of the divine, good servant, bad servant, that is a different story, uh, but a servant nonetheless. 
and the evidence for this is very simple the material nature is coming from krishna and if you are attached to serving material nature in ignorance by going for the results and consequences thereof you are indirectly serving krishna if you are attached to serving krishna's higher purpose you are directly serving krishna so whether you like it or not whether you are a materialist or a spiritualist you are still serving krishna so that's the bottom line so when you begin to know that that is when you start to understand that although it appears i am independent i am working for myself for my senses you are also gratifying your senses that is the nature of krishna so you are serving some aspect of that albeit in a in a binding consequence way and which is going to keep you in the universe bound to the fruits of your your actions and which is what you want to get rid of so uh, that is because we are ahankara vimudha bewildered by false ego as krishna says in text 27 that i am the doer atma karta aham iti manyate thinking i am the doer so i am actually not the doer i am not the controller i am working in a particular way and i'm getting reactions for it so that's the thing okay any other questions thank you so much okay welcome Great sir okay so we will conclude here at text 30 5 chapter 3 text 35 we will complete here om namo bhagavate vasudevaya 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 You've been listening to Nalan Kanarula on gettingpositivekarmanow.com. Music